2018 was supposed to be the year that Saudi Arabia opened up for international travelers and businesses. It lifted a ban on female drivers, concluded an anti-corruption drive, and launched incentives for foreign companies. To highlight these reforms, the kingdom organized an investors' conference known as Davos in the Desert. But then, on October 2nd, journalist Jamal Khashoggi was murdered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, sparking international condemnation. The current relationship with Saudi Arabia is not working for America. They have been strategic allies and could be in the future. But right now, it is more of a burden <clears throat> than it is an asset. And why do I say that? This uh, country, led by the de facto leaders, the Crown Prince, has been a wrecking ball. And the Khashoggi incident is just uh, one of many, but the most egregious. And I think most people can relate to why we're upset. Looking to avoid the fallout, many companies distance themselves from Riyadh. CNN, CNBC and other media outlets deserted the International Investors Conference, as did investors and large companies like Viacom, Uber and BlackRock. And some, including Richard Branson's Virgin Group, suspended all business ties with Saudi Arabia. The snub was partially responsible for a delay in the kingdom's plans to sell shares in its oil company Aramco to the public. But the cold response from world leaders was soon replaced by warmer gestures. The US administration began to soften its stance on Riyadh, paving the way for other countries to return to business as usual with the kingdom. We have no smoking gun that the Crown Prince was involved, not the intelligence community or anyone else. There is no smoking gun. Human rights activists say despite the passage of a year, the mystery surrounding Khashoggi's death remains unsolved. Unfortunately, a year after the shocking murder of Jamal Khashoggi, we're in exactly the same place we were a year ago. All the important questions, who gave the orders for the murder, who was responsible, where Jamal Khashoggi's remains are still unanswered. This is, you know, the, the most shocking case of a, a journalist being silenced for expressing his views in the most brutal way possible. But given their business ties with the oil-rich kingdom, many companies and countries have already moved on. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. And Taha Abbas joins us in the studio for more on this. He's a financial columnist for the Daily Sabah newspaper. Good to have you back with us, Taha. Now, after changing stories several times, the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has finally come out with a sort of buck stops with me, Mia Culpa, saying that, uh, you, you know, he's ultimately responsible, but he had nothing to do with it. Right. How much has his reputation been damaged by this whole affair, this murder? I think uh, both his reputation and, and Saudi in general have been much damaged by this uh, by this uh, act, frankly, this heinous act, um, because it was it was. I mean, there are human rights violations. Uh, there were human rights violations before this, obviously, but this was very blatant, right? Um, and it came right on the on the uh, on the eve of a new dawn for Saudi Arabia, frankly. Um, you know, all the PR that went into uh, rebranding Saudi Arabia that happened right before this. Uh, and it was a, you know, a major, I mean, obviously the, the human aspect of it is, is, is something that we all realize, but the economic impact was obviously, was also very great. Um, you know, that's millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars spent on PR that vanished, frankly, overnight. Mm, and right. this PR effort is still underway. We know that uh, the government has apparently paid out a host of uh, Instagram social media influencers to visit Saudi Arabia right. and presumably to, to report favourably for sure. the country. But okay. uh, soon after Khashoggi's murder, we had a, a host of business leaders boycott uh, this so-called Davos in the Desert Summit, right. an investment summit that was happening in Saudi Arabia. But a year on, do you think it's business as usual? It appears to be. I mean, even even a few weeks after. I mean, uh, people who have there are hundreds of billions of dollars invested in Saudi Arabia. There are companies and countries, as we heard from President Donald Trump and other uh, prime ministers and leaders around the world, who have who are heavily invested in doing business in, in Saudi Arabia, and uh, they're not going to let, and they have not let, frankly, a murder uh, affect those relationships. Obviously, we don't know uh, if Mohammed bin Salman ordered the 
the killing of, uh, of Khashoggi, or, or who did, frankly, but whoever did, he's very right in his assessment in saying that you know, it, it's, he's responsible in that respect, the, the buck stops here, and as a result, uh, his image has been tarnished by this, right? So the question is, how will he and the government uh, turn this around? Um, the obvious answer is to find whoever was responsible, ultimately, and perhaps you can do an open trial or something where, where someone, is, someone is punished. Otherwise, it's just, you know, th that, that will add insult to injury and will ultimately hurt them in the long run. Now, let's talk about this new dawn for Saudi Arabia that you mentioned. Right. Uh, now, the Crown Prince has grand plans for the kingdom. His so-called Vision 2030 project right. involves, I guess, moving away from oil revenues in order to modernise right. the country, give people jobs. How much has that, uh, I guess, that project suffered as a result of Jamal Khashoggi's murder? I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult to attract uh, investors and a lot more difficult to attract... Um, uh, human resources, frankly, uh, to the region because of this. Um, uh, and I think, like I said earlier, bringing this to a resolution will, will help abate those concerns. But in the meantime, they are there, right? Um, and this will tarnish that image for a while. Uh, and I was very, frankly, myself personally, was very optimistic about this, you know, uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman's views and his vision of turning around the kingdom because it's unfortunate because there's a whole class of of Saudi uh, youth and generations who are, who have kind of, there's a lost generation there, right? So um, he was very much in favor of turning that around and maybe they can be successful in it, but it will be a much uh, uh, higher uh, mountain to climb now, now after this uh, incident. And throughout all this, I think all eyes have been on uh, Donald Trump to see how right. he would react to Jamal Khashoggi's murder and Saudi Arabia's implications. Now, it seems that the Trump administration is still keen to, uh, keep uh, Mohammed bin Salman as an ally, mainly as a customer. Right. Uh, now, that obviously is the wrong approach in many people's eyes, even amongst the US Congress. Right. D how crucial was that tacit support from Donald Trump in, I guess, keeping uh, Saudi Arabia afloat during all this? I mean, uh, we don't need to beat around the bush here. I think this, uh, this policy uh, that the United States has employed has been the same, whether it be Donald Trump or Barack Obama or any of his predecessors, frankly. I mean, all the way to Dwight Eisenhower, frankly. Um, but the difference is Donald Trump was so, uh, was so open about it, you know? Uh, he, was, he, he said, we're, we're selling these, this country hundreds of millions of dollars, billions, excuse me, of dollars in weapons, in, in arms, and that's going to hurt our jobs if we do anything negative, if we refuse to sell them. So um, he, he, he just said openly what everyone already knew was going on, right? So um, it's, you know, I would like to blame Donald Trump for those actions, but they predate him, right? Um, so ultimately, uh, do I think uh, uh, Trump, the Trump administration will, will negatively sanction Saudi Arabia or will business or cooperation uh, decrease because of this? I don't, frankly. So mm -hmm. the, the, with all these things, it was, this was such a negative thing for Saudi Arabia. I mean, just speaking economically, it boggles the mind why who or why this was done at all. It makes no sense from any perspective. Obviously, from a uh, humane perspective, it makes no sense. But from a business perspective, it's just ridiculous. Okay, let's see if we finally get some answers uh, a year later. Taha Arvas, thank you as thank always. Thank you.